with this math, it's going to make deck building easier than teaching your grandparents how to use their new smartphones. Hello, mathematicians. Today, we're going to be breaking draw two cards with real math. Yes, that's it. We're going to be jumping right in. And if, for those of you that are confused as why, how can we break draw two cards? Take a look at all of these. They all have one thing in common, and that's uh, they remove something to draw two, right? And we'll see similar things like this. What I mean by this, like discard a level eight, draw two, right? And here are all the number cards, you know, send uh, from your hand that equals level 10, draw two, banish a level seven, draw two. So we're like removing, discarding, sending, placing it on the bottom or top of our deck and drawing two. And these are the, the different numbers that correspond. But it doesn't have to just be these numbers. The math can actually go with the number and a myriad of cards. Take a look at all of these here. Look at this. Uh, you could even do it by archetypes, too, or, or, or different things. Discard a dragon tuner with a thousand or less attack. Draw two. The Orcus card. Send an Orcus monster from your hand. Draw two. Generators. Reveal a generator. Draw two. Speaking of generators, these, this deck has been lost at sea for 40 years. It's like Odysseus in the Odyssey. Uh, I, I feel like I, I, it's one of my favorite decks, but nobody uses it anymore. Let's do stuff like this. And, and by the way, generators also like using level nine. So how many of these do we need to use to get it working? All right, now let's take trade in as a big example here. Take a look at this trade in discard a level eight monster, draw two cards, right? So we're playing a blue eyes deck here. How does this math work out? Well, to have one copy of trade in, let's say we're running trade in at three. There's a 12.5% chance for it to be in our hand. Uh, if we're running it at one copy, if we're running at two copies. It's a 22% chance and if we're running at three. It's a 33% chance to have and draw our trade-in. But we're not worried about trade-in or the trade-in, like to draw trade-in. We want to know about the second part. We've got four cards in our hand, and one of them needs to be a level eight. Here in this example, I've got two. But what's the math? How many how many blue eyes cards should I run if I was running a blue eyes deck or level eight cards with this? Well, here's the math and here's the chart. Here it goes. Let's jump right in. We don't need to waste more time. I think I did a good explanation of what I need here. So remember, we're going to have four cards left in our hand. That's why it was, we're not going to have a five card hand. It's technically going to be a four card hand. And our deck's not going to be 39 size because we're going to have the trade in, which means there's going to be four other cards, like four other cards and a trade in. That means our technically our deck is considered 39 size. So the math for when I do my hyper uh, geometric calculations is going off of a four card hand and a 39 size deck. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's very interesting how that works. Anyways, for those of you that don't know that, all you know is that there's a sweet spot and it's right here. And I'm going to tell you about the sweet spot and when we can break the rule of the sweet spot. I say the sweet spot is right here, somewhere between 13 to 17 cards, because it gives us anywhere between an 81 to a 91 percent chance for the trade in to resolve. So that means if you are running four cards, or if you're running level eights, if you're playing the blue eyes deck, you'd want to have a 13 to 17 level eight cards if you're going to run trade in for it to successfully resolve. Now, why not more than 17? Because what happens is now you start getting hyper consistent and you might not want to have all of those level eights. In fact, you might want other things in your deck like hand traps, board breakers, your tech cards. Maybe you want some triple tactics talents, whatever, like the flavor of the month tech card or like some hand traps that you really want or board breakers uh, like or, or just those like your pet favorite cards like oh yeah baby i love me my lunchbox lunchy lunch card you know what i'm saying my gingerbread house anyways but there are times to break the rule and i would say like let's say you're using something like dangers or forest for example or for example they just want to use he just wants to he counts as a level a sure but he wants to just discard himself to get uh, his his thing anyway. So you mostly want to use him for his effect anyways. So you kind of want to overload then if you're doing something like that. Again, dangers, they have an effect when they discard themselves. Granted, you could use the discard effect with the trade-in because that does discard. But if you're playing dangers or something like that, you know, you want, you want to do all that anyways. There are times that you can break this rule. And that is if you're using, again, cards that kind of also want maybe like a two, three card combo kind of stuff then you got to kind of consider that. Now, another thing to look forward to here, this is just a 40 card. Let's jump into the math for a 60 card deck. Oh, and before I jump into the math of a 60 card deck, by the way, if you like math at all, 
or if you like this kind of stuff, finding out, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Please just subscribe. That, that helps me out a lot. I really love it. Or, or just join the Discord. Check it out. Oh, by the way, I'm on Twitch now. You can find me Monday and Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm going to be trying to, to stream. So at this Eastern Standard Time, you might find me there. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be consistent with that. Speaking of consistency, well, let's look at the 60 card graph right here. By the way, is the 40 card graph, which you saw. And by the way, I make these graphs myself. So that's why it doesn't look the same as the other one was because now I want to make add the, the 59 size deck. Uh, and I, 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 I I just couldn't make it the same format. But anyway, so it's about, it's about here. This is the 49. Now, with the 60 card deck, the math starts changing because, of course, you need more cards to get that same level of consistency. Now, to get to the green spot, which is right here, that 80% level, you're going to need to run like 23 cards. Uh, that's how you start getting to like the 87. So anywhere between 20 to 25 is, is your sweet spot there. I wouldn't go more than that. And you know what? I also want to say something else, too, about, about this. So I'm also a big liar because it doesn't just have to be draw two cards that follow this this kind of mat logic, right? Take take these cards, for example. Why do these cards follow the graphs, right? For example, this battle wasp wrap here, the onslaught, showcasing two decks here that, that can really be used, that, that can use this kind of math to help you out. If you don't control any monsters or the only face up monsters you control are insects, discard another insect monster, place a battle wasp win for your deck. So how many insects should I run, right? So really the, the draw two cards was kind of a misnomer and it should really be like the discard kind of decks. It, they really don't have a name, so but they, they make more sense to just call them the draw twos. By the way, if this card resolves, you're drawing way more than two cards anyways. And and same thing with Sword Soul Strategist. Discard another Sword Soul card. So how many Sword Soul cards do we need to run? So taking a look at the math here, let's see what these guys are doing here. So 45. So he's going to be, he needs to be anywhere between the 13 to 23 mark because he is running a bit more. And so, yeah, let's see. Let's count his insects because to resolve this you need insects one two the max these are insects three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixty seventeen eighteen nineteen cut i got a nice kaiju there 20 to 1 to 2 23 24 25 26 insects so he's overloading on insects but that's fine again because again he'd rather save his maxis and his kaijus for the stuff so he doesn't even really want to count them as towards his math and so, again, that's one of the exceptions where you can overload yourself. Now, our Sorso player here is playing really close to 40, really wants to eke out and make sure that he has the maximum number of hand traps he can run and get that math right. So he's going to want to have, with the combo with this, he's going to want about 13 other Sorso cards. Let's see if he's got it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Only 8, and then 9 if he gets another one. But... Remember, these can also search Sword Soul. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So he's like right on the money with what he needs. Oh, Blackout's a Sword Soul card too. Sword Soul Blackout. So 14. So this guy is right on the money here. So with that, let's take these two decks and go into some replays to see what we can do with that. And let's actually see if the math works out. All right, uh, here we go. So we've got the, we know the Battle Wasp list. And, and this guy is, is going first here. Our, our, our guy that's showing us here. And look at this, he's got the Sting, and that's going to want to get the Battle Wasp guy to the hand. But no, Ash Blossom, but because he's running such good ratios, allows him to put the Cross Out Designator and some other cards to negate the cards that might stop his play. So he's got a, a good balance between Insects and the cards we want. And here's the card I want to highlight right here. If you don't control any face-up monsters or only insect monsters, which he's got, you can discard another insect monster and place the Battle Wasp win. This is kind of like, even though he's not that spell card where you discard one, draw two, it's going to kind of be like that. Because look, we're going to discard the insect, the math there, and let's count how many cards this is going to draw him. Look, that's one insect. And by the way, Pin is going to come out. Pin's going to do something, take him 200, tax him for 200, and again, that's going to activate again. So now he's drawing two, and there you go. So it's like the draw two, discard one, and now here comes Sachi, the ceremonial bow. I have no idea what this guy is going to do, but we could treat it as a tuner when he's synchro summoned. That's all I know, and I guess he makes the battle wasp whim jump in and out 
like me if I was playing hopscotch or jumping in those like jump rope circles. Anyways, we're gonna go into Diablantis here. That sends an insect to the graveyard. I remember that. And then Praying Mantis will give us a token. Uh, so, oh yeah, here we go. Token right there on the side. That's where I like to put my tokens too. I don't know about you. And here we go. This is the activating again. Because again, whenever a Battle Boss Monster comes out, it can activate. You just get to add something with lower attack than that. So, uh, again, more battle wasps are getting added. I've never seen uh, so many wasps in my life. I feel like uh, an experienced farmer would be so happy here. And here comes the revolution. Battle wasp revolution. Never seen this card in my life, but certainly he's starting a revolution. Trying to show us that, indeed, with Mac, you can use insects. And here you go. Uh, this guy's trying to use uh, now Pico Fanilia. Is, is that how you say that? Pico Felina. That's how you say it. Pico Felina. Never good with names, but what you are good with is throwing these back. And whenever you see a resonant insect uh, on the field, you know you're going to go into some crazy stuff. Because this guy's looking like he's just going back to Armor Horn. But no, now resonant insect's going to add an earth, uh, an earth insect. Going to add the supply soldier. By the way, you can also add Max C with that card if you want. But. This guy's going to want to combo more. He's going to want to combo hard. I don't really like combo decks, but if you're using math and this guy's using math, I'm going to like it. So this guy's definitely using math to his advantage here. Going to go into the Mantis Monk Ragnarok, which is going to banish more cards. This thing's got more more things banished to the Shadow Realm than Merrick uh, from the anime. Anyways, uh, we're just banishing a bunch of insects. That's like me in my backyard with my raid. Just banishing a bunch of insects to their demise. Anyways, now we're somehow just using that supply insect to get the Saturn to get V Trooper landing. Gonna also go into the Invincible Atlas here. What insect are we not going into here? And that's a really cool animation. Banishing cards, getting that armor horn back. And then when this guy, the revolution is banished, starting the revolution, he can come back. That's pretty cool. And he, by the way, his attack goes up for every insect that's banished. We're going to finally fuse into this card. I have no idea what it does. If anybody knows what this card does, uh, please tell me. I know none of you have seen this card before. If you do, you're lying. Because let's read it together here. If all everything you got are insect monsters, you can target two monsters on the field, including an insect you control, and banish them. So we're going to want to banish our own insect here, most likely, because when that's banished, it can special summon itself back. But it also has got some other effect here. Not only does it come back, but you can destroy cards up to the number of banished insects and do 500 for each card you destroy. This guy's got a pocket full of miracles and uh, banished insects. He's got more things banished than a haunted graveyard. Anyways, uh, we're going against Gold Sarcophagus here. Gold Sarcophagus, of course, it's the Malice player. Malice being the number one deck at the moment. And this guy's got two Lancias. He's so prepared for Malice. Uh, he, he's more prepared than the Witcher is when he goes out hunting. Anyways, uh, what are we going to got, got going on here? He's going to do more Melis. Surely he's waiting to pop off these until he does his own little banishing. So he's going to do his little banish trick, right? He's like, first I'm going to show you my magic trick, and then I'll prevent us from banishing stuff. So here we go. This guy's going to come back starting a revolution. The huge revolution is not over, and we're going to do a little 500 damage there. Oh, and because he was a battle wasp, the wind will activate. Now here comes Lancia, Locky you into everything, but no! Oh, cross out designator, but we're gonna chain Lancia to the cross out. So Lancia's still gonna go through, but oh, this guy's gonna get the last licks because he's still gonna march here. The Malice is a uh, Malice, I should say, like Alice, Malice in Wonderland. I like to say Malice because it's got the two L's, but anyways, he's got the Splash Mage, so he's still comboing off, and I think we're finally all out of interactions here. That's all she wrote. Now this guy can go off to the races. What are you going to do for us here? Uh, he's got Splash Mage and Link Decoder. Probably going to go to Transcode Talker. Yes, of course. Transcode Talker can bring back Splash Mage. And of course, Link Decoder can come back on the field. And this is how the Malice player climbs. The Malice player climbs. He's climbing like uh, me over the fence in the schoolyard in the backyard. Going into Dragon the dark fluid here dark fluid can attack a number of times up to the different elements and he can send a car so he's gonna be able to attack twice boom bada bing bada boom getting rid of two guys there and uh what else we got now this guy's two elements by the way he's fire and dark pretty cool gonna get that armed rebellion but you can send something else to the graveyard here maybe you're gonna send in that druid's uh swarm you should have maybe done that earlier if you could have uh, you should have done that maybe in the battle phase because now this guy gets to use B Trooper Landing and he was able to use the revolution. Oh no, and that gets to pop. 
remember, whenever that card gets used, you get to pop in. Oh, no, we're back to the races again. This guy's already out. He doesn't even need to do that. In fact, he's just going to show you that with mathematics, anything is possible. And there you go. That's how you use the Battle Wasp engine with math. You draw two cards, and you're looking good. Good job uh, to our Insect Duelist there and showing us starting a revolution with insects. All right, so here we go. We got our Sword Soul player here going. What are we going up against here? Uh, our Sword Soul player is, oh, uh, a Lord of Darkness. That's another good draw two card. Uh, we're going to Artifact Lancia it right away. We're going against Melissa. Melissa, of course, never has to worry about their numbers uh, because the, the quantity that you play is always enough. Melissa player is always lucky, always got enough darks in their hand. Anyways, he turned off that Allure of Darkness with Lancia. Lancia, by the way, just a side note, really good counter to add in your cards right now. And uh, even though this guy did get Lancia, he is performing pretty well under Lancia because he's got Splash Mage. Splash Mage, of course, can get a uh, uh, Malice back. Malice, now, what are you going to go here? Going to go into the Red Ransom. Red Ransom lets her add the spell back that they want. Probably going to get that Mirror. Uh, no, I mean, the Melissa Underground is what you're going to add. So, whoa. He's got three back row. That's that's too much back row for me. I'd be scared, but okay, we'll start off with here. A little bit of a juicy take here. And now we're going to go use this. That's going to be able to banish a card on the field. So right away, he gets to banish that. My uh, light's flickering more. Uh, he's getting kind of nervous here. And what are we going to do here? There's Malice in the Mirror. So that's what I thought he was going to add. So he had Malice in the Underground. So whenever I see Malice in the Mirror added. But here's where the map checks out. My guy, the Sword Soul Strategist here, is true to his name, had enough math to make sure that he had the Blackout in his hand. So he can extend, it, even after these two deadly disruptions, this guy's still going to be able to get stuff. And by the way, he's paying a hefty amount of life points, 1,500 life points paid. And there goes Underground back in there, and he's still got a card here, but here comes the Strategist. This guy had enough cards, creating the token, and what are we going to go into here? We got to go into an 8. And, of course, the new card here, Mola. Mola, how do you say this? Adhara actually gets to do a couple of things. Chain blocks from the Ash as well. So, just in case he had an Ash there. Chain blocks this, so you could get the Infinity here. Tengi Infinity at that. Oh, my gosh. And now this is off to the races. This guy's got everything he needs. He also has a Nemesis Protoss in his hand, uh, which is probably active now. It's, it's definitely live, and here comes Barone the floor to try to turn this game around because Malice got to do what he wanted. Oh, and yes, we're going to turn this on. Nemesis Protoss getting turned on as well, but now here comes a lot of this stuff to counteract, uh, to create a big, deadly board. Look at this, trying to create a nice, hefty defense because if the Melissa player gets to go activate on this turn, surely he's got so much follow-up, so we got to destroy something on the field. He's going to try to use that. And then, no, Baron is going to counter that, but then he's going to get counter that, and then Baron's going to counter the counter. A lot of over-the-counter stuff here. I feel like we're at a pharmacy. Uh, all of this, this countering going on here. We're in a nice, deadly boxing match. And, wow, this guy did have an Ash Blossom, so this guy did do a lot of good chain blocking. But by the time the Ash Blossom now comes out, all the chain blocking was too much because when Protoss activates, you select Dark, and everything gets here. But it doesn't matter that you're going to send that card to the graveyard because look at this. These two cards add up to enough damage where everything's done. And that's how you do it. That's the power of math. That's the power of Pine Soul, baby. Uh, I hope you guys like this. Uh, these replays. And, and just use the math. Use the chart to your advantage. You want to run, again, that, those specified quantities of cards. I would say about uh, the 40-card deck, you want to probably run around 14 cards there. And then if you're going up to the 60-card deck, you're using like a 2-3 card combo deck. More like 23 cards. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.